while the Ukrainian army every day continued to gain more territory of the Russian Federation in the Kursk Oblast. For the last 24 hours, Ukraine took the village of Durovka and Krimenoa. I would say it's quite a breakthrough after the Olgivka village, because Ukraine for this operation should have crossed the river. And as you see, the Alexandrovka village is in a gray zone and the vector of the Ukrainian attack goes to Kolichevka. If this battle area extends for other three settlements, we may state that the Russian group in Kornevo will be just encircled, because the main road which leads from the city will be just cut. And westbound there is just a river, swamps and quite difficult terrain. So the situation for the Russian group in Kornevo is not really good. Ukraine also tries to perform the straightforward attacks towards the settlement, but also with the losses, at the same time causing the Russian army losses, but also losing the vehicles, it's been confirmed that Ukraine lost some of them in this place. But tactically and in the resources, Ukraine still has the advantage over the Russian army in Kursk. Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go. Alright guys, we are now on the ground news, the website and the application which always keeps me updated about the news not only around Ukraine but around the world. And here you see the story about the massive fire of the Russian oil storage. Because of the drone strike which caused a chain reaction, that facility is under the fire for the four days. And the Russian firefighters are unable to eliminate the fire, so immediately we have the information about 500 firefighters who have been involved in eliminating the fire, and 41 of them have been delivered to the local hospitals. We have more than 40 articles all around the world putting the light on the case. I really enjoy the Grandis platform because all the information is given to you in a very simple and convenient manner. To subscribe for the website, please follow my personal link, it's ground.news. On the right hand side you may see lots of the information regarding the topic, the factuality report, it is what I use all the time, the high factuality related to the news, because we know that definitely there is the fire in the Russian oil refinery in the storage facility. And here we may open the map and check out the source or region. And the articles are listed on the left, all of the articles. Russia tries to hide the information, so we have to rely to the Russian opposition sources, for example, the Moscow Times. Here we have the basic data about the source. What is important for me is the high factuality. If you click on a new source, you may find more information about this one and whether you can trust it. But we're gonna check the article because it's most important for us. And you may see even the satellite image, so 74 of the fuel tanks are located out there. Those are mixed oil fuel tanks. And the most of those huge containers are filled with diesel fuel, so Russia uses that a lot for its army. Basically here they do not speculate, just stating the fact about the fire. At the very end of the article they remind that Russia started the full-scale invasion of Ukraine and they target Ukraine's energy infrastructure, so it's the fair response of Kyiv, according to Ukrainian officials, and really it is like that. And here we have the Ukrainian media correspondent.net. If we click on the news, again there are just dry facts at first, but here they write that the Russian defense minister stated that all of the drones were supposedly shot down, but a large-scale fire broke out somehow. Well, maybe again someone smoked at the wrong place. Russia always, always reported they've shut down everything, all of the missiles, all of the drones, but somehow they have fires. So by checking out all of the news sources, you may find out and compare the details of the particular information relative to the topic. I just use it for my purposes because my topic is the war in Ukraine, so ground news helps me a lot. So if you want to be updated with the current information coming, please subscribe for the ground news using my personal link. It is the ground.news slash Dennis and by subscribing for the ground news platform, you also support the job that I do on YouTube. Because the ground news is the long-term sponsor of my channel, you know guys that I don't have lots of the sponsors and I only work with those companies whom I can trust and whose product is basically good and I'm really proud to recommend you it. The Ground News is not the big news corporation, no. They also rely on our support, our subscriptions. So subscribe for the Ground News to be constantly updated on the situation in the world. Ground News, thank you for sponsoring this video. Alright, but what's about the Russian army in this area, southern part of the Kursk Oblast, which is now cut from the supplies? Well, Russia tries to restore the supplies after they lost all of the three bridges across the Sain River. From what I saw, they tried to do it in this area. But you know, something went wrong for them in the place because you Ukraine continue to use 
Heimer's munition to eliminate the Russian engineering equipment plus their bridges. The surveillance drones work quite well for the Ukrainian side, so there is no chance for Russia to build the Panton Bridge for a very long time. For now, we know that at least two of their Panton Bridges were totally kaboomed by HIMARS or FPV drones. On my Telegram channel, I published a video from the Ukrainian FPV drones and how they eliminate the Russian engineering equipment. Sorry guys, some of the videos I just cannot publish on YouTube. But I may say that Ukraine is very, very successful in cutting the Russian supplies. So for sure at least 3,000 Russian soldiers trapped in the southern part of Kursk Oblast. Completely cut away from any sort of the supplies and I guess that if Ukraine uses FPV drones, it means that Ukrainian forces are very near. So what's the next step for Ukraine? Well, it will continue to push towards Glushkova, for example. It's the biggest town in all of that part. And probably if Ukraine is successful crossing this river, it might strike from the western side. The situation is pretty much similar as in Kherson of 2022. In this case, Russians will gradually give up the territory until they have some of the resources, but after some point they will just go across the river, leaving all of their heavy equipment behind. They will be forced to cross the river using the floating devices. But potentially there could be the other trap for the Russian group in this area. If Ukraine can concentrate enough resources and able to take Kornewa under control, I'm sure that it will happen in the nearby future judging on the Ukrainian army's tabs. So Ukraine potentially may advance towards Rilsk. And we know that according to the other sources, Ukraine already crossed the border somewhere in this place, so Ukraine might go towards Rilsk from this side as well. In this case, it might be some sort of the double encirclement of the Russian army which is left behind the river, but I think that the chances for Ukraine to conduct this operation, well, they are still low, because Ukraine is limited in resources. And we know that Russia sent their reinforcements to the region, they want to retake Suja under control, plus they want to stop Ukraine in northern direction. So for now, the weakest spot for Russia is the western direction of the Kursk Oblast. Southwestern is better to say. So analyzing the events which are ongoing for already two weeks, I may say that it's the big difference compared to the last year's Ukraine's counteroffensive on the south. At first the strike wasn't advertised in the Ukrainian media, it happened very unexpectedly for the Russian side. In the Ukrainian military command just few generals knew about this operation. Russia definitely was caught off guard. Moreover, the Russian command didn't take the threat seriously. The famous Russian general Lapin, who was the commander of the Kharkiv group, then Ukraine gained lots of the territories in 2022. After it, by the way, he became the most hated Russian general by the Z patriotic community of Russia. Well, here he messed up again because he was the commander of the defense of the region. Kursk region, because the Wall Street Journal came out with an article about the actions of the general. Under his command, the Russian army weakened the defense of the Kursk region because he thought that the attack on Kursk is just not possible. He removed the number of the armored vehicles and also the part of the defense equipment. Equipment. Also, he sent the untrained conscripts together with the Hamad Battalion, but Ahmad Battalion is okay to secure the Russian border. Secure. They don't want to fight in Ukraine and they thought that they are safe in the Kursk Oblast, but something went wrong for them. <laughs> well, I guess the General Lapin did those actions just a few months before Ukrainian strike on Kursk because Russia is in lack of the military equipment and the army personnel. So they sent everything to Ukrainian front lines weakening the own defense of Kursk, Belgrade and Bransk Oblast. So General Lapin again helps Ukraine to get more territories. So far the General Lapin is the best Russian general for Ukraine. Apparently if he commands the forces, Ukraine will get more territory. It's the rule. And I want to show you what General Lapin does the best. So here he commands the Russian BMP. General commands signs to the Russian BMP to move. It isn't a Kursk Oblast, but the Belgrade one. This video dated from the last year, so General Lapin was the commander of the Russian forces, which by the time were fighting against the Russian Legion of Freedom, or the Russian Volunteer Corps, basically the Russian opposition forces, and he shows in this video of how he bravely protects the Russian border and the Russian territory. He calls to the Russian soldiers, 
go i'm your motivation by the way he has the ussr flag on his shoulder so there he called for everyone go 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 it's time to protect your motherland and those soldiers are running behind the general general is leading all of the convoy so the big question is where the general lopping is right now why he's not doing the same variant the same scenario because it worked the last time so it should work again he should show to his soldiers of how he may repel the enemy he should boost their morale but something tells me that it was just a TikTok performance from the general Lapin the last year. This time he's not willing to do the same trick. The Ukrainian attack on the Kursk Oblast is also different compared to the counteroffensive the last year, because here Ukraine uses aviation a lot. MiG-29, Suhoi-27, Suhoi-24s, all of that is in use. On this video you may see the MiG-29 dropping the French ASM Hammer guided bomb. It was spotted in the Sumer region of Ukraine, which is bordering Kursk. On this screenshot, you may see two of those guided bombs drop from the airplane at once. It is also MiG-29. By the way, it was reported that Ukraine lost one of the airplanes during the attack on the Kursk Oblast. But nevertheless, Ukraine still has the airplanes. As we know, also F-16s have arrived to Ukraine. So in the future, Ukraine will use them as well. Maybe even conducting the similar missions by dropping the Western-made bombs. And I guess this is Suhoi-27 with harm missiles, which are basically anti-radar missiles, usually used to target the Russian air defense. In any sort of the mission, aviation plays a great role. So Ukraine didn't use aviation because the Russian air defense was quite strong on the south. But in Kursk everything is different, the Russian air defense is very weak. And if you check out the history of the Ukrainian drone attacks on the Russian infrastructure, you understand that Ukraine was preparing for this mission for a very long time. The Russian air defense was hit in many regions of Ukraine. Also, the Russian facilities like oil refineries were hit in Russia, so Russia was forced to take some of the air defense systems to protect, for example, Rostov Oblast. Also, right before the Ukrainian special military operation was started, Ukraine hit one of the main airfields of the Russian Federation not far away from Kursk, eliminating the ammunition warehouses so the Russian fighter jets are now quite limited in their operation against the Ukrainian Air Force. So all of this puzzle actually works, that's why Ukraine has the success on the front lines. Now we understand that the last year's counteroffensive was kind of the bad idea from the Ukrainian side. There Ukraine got big losses attacking the Russian defense lines straight forward, but this year's operation in Kursk is very successful. There are only two issues remain for Ukraine. The first one, that Ukraine is still in lack of the munition, in lack of the weaponry, armored vehicles. Because of that, I don't think that Ukraine is capable to advance towards, for example, Kurchatov nuclear power plant or to this very important road. By the way, as you may see, Russia tries to build some of the defense lines right on the road. So they think that Ukraine still might do it. The other important issue which remains that Ukraine still haven't obtained the permission to use attack arms missiles deep into the Russian territory. In that case, Ukraine might have covered entire Kursk Oblast almost. But even with those two issues, Ukraine is very successful. But how the Russian officials and Putin himself react on the events in Kursk Oblast? Well, their action is quite limited. The Russian Defense Minister Belousov commanded to create three of the separate Russian military groups in Kursk, Berdansk and Belgorod. It seems like he woke up after two weeks of sleeping. While well, creating those groups will not help the Russian army. They will have to move quite a large group of their forces from the Ukrainian front lines. Yes, they take their forces from the Kherson direction, but not a lot. But what Putin is doing, for example, today? Well, he visited one of the hospitals in Moscow. They showed him the model of the new hospital infrastructure after renovation. This morning he met with a Chinese representative in Kremlin. Yesterday he met with Kadyrov clowns and Kadyrov himself, the Ahmad battalion which runs always from the battlefields. Guys, you have the war in Russia. What are you doing in Moscow on those meetings? You should command your forces. You see how many medals they have. This one for the most 
most liked TikTok video of Ahmad Batlion and this one for the most viral. They're not protecting their motherland, they're military, military commanders, but even their battalion is just running away. Well, actually, there are two of the real evidence of Ahmad soldiers who are definitely in Kursk. The first video evidence that they were hiding somewhere in a basement of Suja and later on were captured by Ukrainian forces. And the second video evidence that I already showed on my channel is how they loot the Russian shops in Kursk. That's it. The video is published by Ahmad soldiers themselves showing how they fight with the bushes. Yeah, sorry guys, I was wrong. Putin went to Chechnya. So after his visit to Baku, in the middle of the crisis in Russia, then the other country really attacked the Russian Federation. Putin went to Baku for some reason, later on came back to Chechnya Grozny to visit Kadyrov and his commanders who always run. Well, it's better to say they don't even run. They are not even there near to the front lines. They are in Chechnya. Probably the only Chechen commander who is now in the Kursk Oblast is Aludinov, the commander of the Chechen Ahmad Battalion. And he became one of the main Russian speakers telling about the situation on the front lines from the Russian perspective. During the first three days he told that Ukrainian forces are totally stopped. After one week he repeated his statement, adding that no Ahmad soldiers were captured or imprisoned, but then the Chinese correspondent went to take the interview. With Aludinov he confirmed that some of the Ahmad soldiers actually were captured by Ukraine. Again, our guest told that they found those in the basements of Suja town. They were just hiding there because Ukraine was really fast encircling the settlement. So why am I sure that there are almost no Ahmad soldiers fighting in real fight against the Ukrainian army? Because I'm monitoring all of the possible Telegram channels and other social media, for example, X platform, which allows for you to see the actual military combat images, including the drone drops, FPV drones. And I guess since the beginning of the war, I saw a couple of those videos with Ahmad soldiers, I mean, with the drone strikes from the Ukrainian side. And I'm sure it happened behind the front lines. So Kader writes my film brave videos of how they can fight, but in reality their battalion is just capable to fight against civilians and against the Russian soldiers. There were the cases reported by the Russian Z bloggers how Kaderovites forced Russian conscripts to fight, standing behind their backs and not allowing them to retreat. Well, in that case, conscripts just surrendered to Ukrainian army, they don't have the other way out. The real Chechens, or it's better to say Ichkeria citizens, are now fighting for Ukraine. After Russia occupied Chechnya, so Ichkeria, many of the locals were forced to leave the country. Most of them went to the European countries, also to the United States of America and Canada. And after Russia started the attack on Ukraine, the full-scale war actually, they decided to join the Ukrainian army for revenge and definitely now they are fighting in Russia itself. Those are not the TikTok warriors. I believe that Kadyrov soldiers afraid those the most. At first I thought that Putin put the fake beard to look like Kadyrov, but no, those are the headphones. I would say it's kind of the strange method to wear the headphones. Is it convenient? Uh, not really. Well, maybe he didn't want to spoil his hair. <laughs> You know, they were at the shooting range somewhere in Grozny and Putin was looking at Adam Kadyrov, the son of Ramzan Kadyrov, who got hundreds of medals already, probably. So here's Adam, guys. I cannot show you full video because he was running there with a rifle. I may only share it on my Telegram because YouTube applied restrictions for the firearms to be shown here. But if you look at the video, you'll be just laughing how he moves. He is so clumsy, like some sort of the clumsy bear. I think that Adam doesn't have the quality of the real Ahmad Batalyon soldier. What the Ahmad soldier should do the best is to run. Run as fast as you can. Here it's simply not possible. So never send Adam somewhere close to Ukraine because he will be imprisoned, hiding in the basement of the fast food restaurant. By the way, Putin compared Ukraine with Chechnya. I guess he has the similar scenario or the same scenario for Ukraine to occupy it as he did with Chechnya. He said that they will get rid of the Nazis in Ukraine like they did with so-called terrorists in Chechnya. Putin has the names for every sort of the group outside so-called Ruski Mir. For him, we are Nazis, Chechens were terrorists, Americans could be, I don't know, demons. 
because they always tell that the Western culture is out of Christianity. But there is no Christianity in Russia itself. Their church is fully controlled by FSB. What is also interesting that Putin visited Beslan, the place of the attack on a local school. So far, the biggest attack on civilians in Russian Federation, conducted by fanatics. Yes, but the actions of the Russian special forces caused lots of the losses among civilians. But Putin said everything was fine. They act professionally. Well, there was the interview with the Russian soldier who took the part in storm. The school, and he said that the Russian army used RPGs, RPGs to blast the building with the hostages. Guys, I don't know the other regime in the world that could be so bloody nowadays. Even the North Korean dictator is not such a bloody bastard as Putin. Now they pray for the casualties they cause themselves. It's unbelievable. The same is happening in Ukraine, but in a much larger scale. For example, in Mariupol. Then the Russian bombs hit the opera theater where lots of the civilians, including kids, were hiding. So why am I telling you about Putin and his reaction, or almost no reaction, on Ukrainian special military operation in Kursk? Well, basically for my viewer to understand that there is no further step of the escalation which Russia is willing to perform. The Western leaders are saying about some sort of the red lines for Russia, and because of those, they limit the military support of Ukraine or not allowing Ukraine to use the long-range missiles on the Russian territory. But with this move, which you can see on the military map, Ukraine cancels all of the Russian red lines. Putin is not responding. He is not perceiving the situation as it should be. Just imagine that Russia attacked Ukraine back in 2022. Zelensky would go for the casual visit to Baku or call his generals for the photo session. No, everyone was busy. Everyone was focused on emergency situation. But for Russia, it is not an emergency. Everything is usual. Just some sort of the situation. Without the word emergency, there is simply no response from Putin. His behavior didn't change. In fact, it doesn't change under the influence of the external factors, even the huge factors like this one. Russia was attacked for the first time since the Second World War. The nuclear country was attacked. Yeah, the biggest country on the globe actually was attacked, but in the Russian news and from Russian regime, you just hear some sort of the mumbling. Yeah, we have the situation in the Kursk Oblast, but everything is under control. Everything is secured. No worries. You know, the first day that Putin started this full-scale war against the Ukraine, he stated that every country which wants to help Ukraine should think about the possible. Circumstances and those could be devastating for those countries. The Ukrainian allies definitely, during the first few months, hesitated to help Ukraine, thinking about the possible circumstances from Russia. But later on, everyone understood that Putin is just bluffing. So Ukraine obtained at first Hymers. So Putin said that they have better rocket artillery systems. Later on, Ukraine obtained tanks. Putin said that T90 is the best tank out there. It will just nail Abrams tank. Finally, Ukraine obtained the fighter jets. Putin said that it's not the threat for their aviation. And now this one, just a situation, a situation for Russia. Yeah. So if there are no red lines, as Ukraine already showed that there are none of those, we should realize that the hands are untightened, and Ukraine should receive everything, all the permissions, all of the weaponry necessary to get rid of the Russian. Army on its territory and maybe partially on the territory of the Russian Federation, creating some sort of the buffer area to avoid the possible conflicts in the future. But unfortunately, it seems like the Western politicians do not understand that. And we may still find the articles like that saying that some of the allies are not supplying to Ukraine, for example, the air defense systems as they promised. But you may say, Denis Putin will use nukes.、Uh, I don't think so, guys. If he didn't use those. Right now, he will not use those in the future. But I agree that there is the chance that Putin might use nukes against Ukraine, and maybe not only. But that decision will not be influenced by the external factors like the war in Ukraine or the war on the territory of the Russian Federation. It could be a decision of the small Putin circle. You don't need to provoke Russia for that, because actually this war has been started. Unprovoked, so Russia attacked Ukraine. There were no any sort of the reasons for Russia to strike Ukraine with its forces. 
Well, as far as I remember, the reason for this war, as Putin said, was the protection of the Donbass people. After Russia itself blown up the vehicle in Donetsk and one small building in the forest saying that it's the FSB headquarters. So Russia doesn't need the factor to strike, attack or even to use nukes. If Putin decides to use nukes, he will use those. And there will be no any difference if Ukraine attacks Kursk or Bransk Obas by the time or not. The Ukrainian media reported about the massive strike on the Russian military airfields and also on the Moscow region the last night. Russia reportedly lost MiG-31 jet together with two of the Illusion 76 transport aircraft. But I am still waiting for the confirmation at least by the satellite image. What we know that the small plane-looking drones were spotted far away from the Ukrainian border. This drone was heading towards the Alenia base of the Russian strategic aviation, almost 2,000 kilometers away from Ukraine towards north in Murmansk Oblast. Speaking about the satellite images, well, it is the most recent one from Rostov Oil Storage. You may see that devastation every day is bigger and bigger. It happens because wind and the dry weather helps the fire to spread around facility, igniting more and more fuel and oil tanks. Judging on the satellite image, we may say that the green part is not yet being destroyed, the red and pink tanks are destroyed or partially destroyed, and the destiny of those, well, it's unknown because smoke covers the entire place, so after the fire is eliminated by probably itself, we're gonna see the picture. One more satellite image shows that Russia built some sort of the defense line to protect the Kerch Bridge. Kind of the interesting solution, probably they afraid that Ukraine might use some sort of the drone boats. So barges and those floating devices they think are not enough. And now let's review the front lines in Ukraine. So the situation in New York actually improved. So it was yesterday, it is today. You may see this gray area. It doesn't mean that the Ukrainian forces are encircled in New York. No, but there is the heavy fight ongoing. It's hard to determine the real picture. I spoke with the military guys whom I know and they say that there is no encirclement for our forces in New York. That's probably the only thing I can tell you. And here you may see the advancement of the Russian army towards Druzhba settlement, which previously was fully in the gray zone and the battle will start for Turetsk. Well, actually it has already been started in this district. As for the Pokros direction, let's zoom in. So it was yesterday and today. Russia moved towards Krasny Yar just a little, yesterday, today. Just a great area advancement, but on the south they moved more. So again, yesterday and today. So Ukraine is taking the territory of Russia by the time that Russia is taking the territory of Ukraine. But for Russia, the losses are very high. They lose 1,200 soldiers per day, not KA, but wounded personnel too. Now they are unable to replace the losses. That is why, for sure, in the future, there must be mobilization for the Russian army. But we're gonna speak about it in more details in our next video. Here, my friends, I'm just gonna keep you updated on the situation in Ukraine. And please don't forget to check my personal link for the Ground News platform. This platform I always use to obtain the latest news, not just about the Ukrainian topic, but from all around the world. It is my personal recommendation for you, my friends. And I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time.